very good morning. Welcome you all to the NPTEL course on Advanced Distribution System Analysis and Operation. As you all have learned in the past the challenges associated with distributed energy resources. Today we will continue with the operational challenges associated with DR integrated distribution networks. Now there are two important challenges one is non-technical challenge and the other one is going to be technical challenge. In case of non-technical challenges uh, we can come across the economical challenges, environmental challenges and social challenges. Whereas in case of technical challenge we will have non-operational challenges and operational challenges and within non-operational challenges we have to focus on planning part and we have to focus on actually design issues and also we have to concentrate on policy related issues. Now when we talk about operational challenges due to DR integrated distribution networks, we may face challenges associated with system stability, over voltage, uncertainty, energy management, protection and cyber security. So in today's lecture, we will try to understand how due to integration of DR, the distribution network is going to face issues related to over voltage protection, cyber security, stability and energy management. Operational challenges refers to issues that hinder the core functions of the distribution system and these includes real time decisions and actions taken by system operators to ensure stable and optimal distribution system operation. Now let us focus on system stability. The impact of the DR integration on system stability is still an emerging research area. Factors affecting the stability of the system due to DR's integration includes lack of inertia because due to the rotational devices keep on reducing because of PV integration. So the inertia of the system is going to fall, limited fault current contribution of DR's behavior of the converters during fault write through, PLL problems caused by wrong or faulty synchronization, converter control interactions, interactions of converter control loops with components of power systems. Now IEEE PES task force has revisited and extended the classic power system stability classification as power system stability which is rotor angle stability voltage stability and frequency stability. So for decades we have been told that the stability is either of rotor angle type, voltage type or frequency type. But now two new classes added to the original classification are resonance stability and converter driven stability. So the green blocks as you could see resonance stability and converter driven stability and those two stability related issues are considered due to DR integration into the distribution systems. Now if you move to over voltage, over voltage issues are a common operational challenges with DRs like are integrated into the distribution network and the causes are excess local generation where DRs output which is much more than local demand especially during low load conditions, lack of reactive power control due to inverters not managing voltage via VRs, reverse power flow due to DRs push power towards the grid raising voltage, long high impedance feeders causes larger voltage rise per unit of current, uncoordinated DR operation, no voltage control hierarchy or synchronization, unbalanced DR distribution, single phase DRs cause uneven voltage rise. So the main problems because of over voltage is due to excess local generation, lack of reactive power control, reverse power flow, long impedance feeders, uncoordinated DR operations and unbalanced DR distributions. Now let us understand what are the challenges with over voltage. So let us consider a distribution system, we do have grid, we have transformers and these are the buses 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 
and 12, 13. So, it is a 13 bus systems. So, you could see loads are connected and also we do have PV connected at bus number 3, 5, 4, 7, 8, 10 and 13. So, these are the buses, those who have not only loads but also the PVs. So, and then finally, as you could see the load profile which is the classic load profiles and then you have PV load profiles and uh, voltage at each and every bus can easily be calculated. But during the period of high PV generation, voltage at some buses exceed 1.1 per unit. So, that means few buses experience more experience more voltage due to excess PV penetration and during peak load conditions, the voltage drops below 0.92 per unit. So, there are issues that is sometimes the voltage drops below 0.92 and sometimes the voltage goes as beyond as 1.1 per unit. This voltage fluctuation indicates the significant impact of variable PV generation and load on the low voltage distribution network. Now, the network that is before you, if you penetrate energy through PVs, then the system buses will experience different voltage profiles, sometime it is more and sometime it is lower. So, as per the IEEE standard 1547, if voltage at the point of common coupling exceeds 1.1 per unit, the PV system must cease energy production and disconnect from the grid. So, that means at the PCC, if the voltage is more than 1.1 per unit, then we have to derate or reduce or curtail the generation from the PV. That is a strict guidelines. So, it is very, very important to plan properly how and where and what amount of PV to be integrated so that the derating or curtailment in PV generation should not take place. Now, similarly, uncertainty from renewable based DRs. So, we have connected PV, there is no doubt about it, but the generation is going to be oscillating or uncertain. Then you can see the generation which is keep on oscillating and that will also disturb my voltage profile very significantly. So, sudden change in generation of solar occurs due to clouds and it is too volatile in nature. And from the figure it is observed that the voltage is too volatile and the voltage stability of the system deteriorates due to this. Now, if the PV plants produce energy with too much of deviation due to there is a cloud floating over the PV panels or due to some other reason, if the generation is fluctuating significantly or there is no certainty in generation or it is not smooth, that will significantly disturb my voltage profiles. Now, in case of uncertainty from renewable based DRs, the impact could be grid stability, protection coordination, increased curtailment, economic dispatch and markets are affected very badly and finally, that will also disturb my optimal power flow. Now, what are the challenges due to forecasting issues? Now, what is the cost of forecasting error? The issue here that means we assume by connecting a 3 megawatt PV plant, I am expecting actually 2.5 megawatt or kilowatt at a given point of time out of a 3 megawatt or 3 kilowatt plant. But if it is not happening, then how does it cost? That means the uncertainty associated in my generation will lead to a challenge or a deterrent and how the deterrent being calculated in the form of cost. So, cost of solar forecast error is the cost of compensating for DA forecast error through purchasing or selling energy in the RT market. So, what happens if you are making your load balance assuming that x megawatt of power will come through DRs and if it is not happening, then the gap between the forecasted generation and what actually you got it need to be met from a local market. So, you have to pay money to buy this energy and which is certainly costlier. So, persistence forecast is very, very important that assumes tomorrow's output will match today's NAM forecast derived from the North American mesocal numerical weather model uh, with basics and bias corrections. It has to work, but if it is not working, then you have to really pay a lot of penalty 
or you have to invest a lot of money to compensate it. So regardless of the forecast approach, Casio experiences the cost of forecast errors. So the forecast error in solar energy have a measurable economic impact. Now moving to energy management systems, which is really responsible for data monitoring, data analysis, data forecasting, optimization and real time control. And you could see the control center and different components of a overview of energy management system in a distribution network. Energy management system, you know, where historical data on renewable energy resources is not available, especially at distribution level. Forecasting the generation from RES is not accurate. So, these are the challenges. Modeling uncertainty from RES generation is also challenging. Accurate modeling of distribution network and DRs is necessary for a good optimization procedure. So, these are the challenges one has to be very, very careful. So, proper energy forecasting and modeling of RES are equally important for any energy management system operation. Now, there are a bit of uh, protection challenges as we all discussed. Conventional protection devices such as fuges, electromechanical relays and unidirectional overcurrent relays are not equipped to effectively protect modern distribution networks that experience reverse power flow. The integration of DR introduced several challenges. Changes in fault current levels resulting from DG integration, bidirectional current flow within the system and the limited short circuit current contribution from DG resources. So, few of the common prominent challenges due to DG, due to renewable integration to distribution network could be false stripping, blinding of protection mechanism, reclosing and other issues. Protection challenges, especially false stripping, as you could see from the diagram 5.6, it considers a fault current uh, downstream of the DG connection point. If the feeder 1 hosts a high capacity DG, it will contribute fault current to feeder 2. This can result in the tripping of both feeder 1 and feeder 2 even through the fault exists only on feeder 2. So, in context, in a conventional system without DG, only feeder 2 would trip while feeder 1 remain unaffected. So, as you could see how false tripping may happen due to DG integration. Now, in case of blinding of protection, as you see from the diagram 5.7, it considers a fault current or it considers a fault occurring downstream of the DG connection point. In this case, both the DG and the external grid contribute to the fault current. Due to the DG's contribution, the fault current from the grid is reduced compared to a system without DG. If the grid's fault current falls below the relay pickup threshold, the relay on feeder 1 may fail to trip. This condition where the relay fails to detect the isolate, this condition where the relay fails to detect and isolate the fault is known as blinding of protection. And there is one more interesting challenge that is known as cyber security, the emerging DR architecture increases exposure to various cyber threats due to several uh, vulnerabilities. And we are not really covering too much of cyber security, but for the benefit of our students, we want to just touch upon cyber security as an important aspect. And we expect all of you to go through and read more literature on cyber security because of uh, DR integration distribution network, how they are sensitive towards cyber issues. So, any failures you know or uh, in the system due to cyber threat become challenging. So, the features collectively introduce new cyber threats to both DR systems and the broader electric grids. So, when you penetrate DR which may introduce large number of energy devices, they are mostly smart inverters, battery controllers spread across the consumers in utility locations. So, one may you know chase the smart devices and can create serious issues in failing your operation of the distributed energy resources or DGs. Many of these devices are consumer owned potentially which may you know neither utility owned or which is considered to be very very high maybe 10 to 100 times of utility owned 
devices because we have millions of consumers as we discussed in 2030 there could be 50 crore you know consumers uh, having electricity access and probably will be interested to have either a pv panel in the rooftop or energy through renewable energies or maybe having a electric vehicle or electric car or electric cycle so all these potential devices may cause serious threat to distribution system operation through cyber security dr devices operate across multiple security administrative devices utilities typically have visibility only up to the smart meter while dr owners manage their own devices limiting centralized security control dr control networks may be interconnected with building automation and it networks increasing the cyber attack surfaces so this is how the dr threat seems to be more because we have a physical system we have a cyber system and within cyber system we have different lan networks we have wan networks and we have warm pack networks so wide area networks local area networks and wide area monitoring protection and control networks probably prone to cyber threats that's what we wanted to highlight because of dr integration the cyber threats are more significant because of the networks due to lan wan and warm pack now with this introduction of first week lectures we will move to the majority of the courses will be covered in next 11 weeks so we'll be talking about dr integrated distribution network modeling we will also talking about dr integrated distribution network load flow analysis we'll be talking about distribution network optimal power flow analysis we'll be talking about distribution network reliability we'll be talking about transmission distribution interactions dso dso modeling artificial intelligence enable control of distribution networks dr integrated distribution network fault analysis and protection distribution network resiliency and then we'll move to distribution network automation and restoration study and at the end we'll be talking about cyber physical layer in distribution system so wonderful thank you very much i request all of you before moving to week 2 please revise your full content of the five lectures of week 1 wish you all the best very good luck thank you